Hey, and welcome back. We're going to go over what I ate the past couple days. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Thursday and Friday. That's right. Was it good? Was it bad? <laughs> we shall see. First things first. My little sign for today. Enjoy the little things. This is one of my little things. A good cup of coffee. What I tell you, life is too short for bad coffee. Hold on. Mm -hmm. That's good. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. I did not get fat off of no coffee. I'm just going to tell you that right now. And I don't foresee coffee keeping me fat. You know what I mean? If I drunk creamer, just sit down with a straw in it. I don't even know if that would do it. You know what? <laughs> I don't know, but I know regardless of where this journey takes me, I'm going to enjoy my coffee and I'm not going to count it. Never have, never will. Knock on wood, they say never, they say never, but now I'm pretty sure you're never going to catch me counting or weighing or measuring creamer in my coffee or denying myself my coffee or limiting my coffee unless the doctor tells me to, which she already did. She said, I can't tell you to stop drinking coffee, but don't know it. Mm -mm. You can't. <laughs> you really just can't. <laughs> Another thing that is a little thing to me, y'all go on and laugh. Ketchup. I grew up eating ketchup on everything. I ate ketchup sandwiches. Yes, I did. I love ketchup. I'm not going to stop eating ketchup. I don't cook a lot of things like used to. Used to in the convenience and fast food situation before, you know, starting a weight loss journey that everything took ketchup. Every, everything was requiring some ketchup. So I don't cook that many things now that actually require ketchup. But when I want it, I'm going to eat it. And I'm not going to count it. <laughs> I'm just not. I Just like my creamer, I'm not sitting down with the dead burn straw sucking it out of the bottle. There are little things in life. It's not just food things. There, there's other little things. I, I, I can't listen. Watching my criminal minds on Netflix when I want to. That's one of the little things in life. And I enjoy it. I enjoy it. It brings me just uh, comfort. It's familiar to me. And especially when I'm like down in the dumps or whatever, I can pop that criminal minds on. And it is just like a, a, a blankie. And I know that sounds weird, but like I said, it's familiar. I know it. And it's a, a constant. It's something that does not change from time to time that I turn that TV on. It is the same every single time. So I can depend on that. And it will like give me, um, I, don't, I don't even have to focus on it, just having it there. So that's one of the little things is having Netflix. It's my son's, but we have it. <laughs> so think of your little things. Um, what are your little things? I know I have more. I, I would say crafting is a little thing, but it ain't. It's a big thing because it takes all my money. <laughs> so speaking of, I had got some money from David. I told him I paid him back. And I, I said, well, what am I up to now, right? He told me. I said, whew. I said, I didn't know I was that high. He said, well, a woman's got a craft. <laughs> so he gets it. He, he knows there's not a lot else I have. And I'm not trying to sound all, you know about it. I'm just saying, I really don't. I have criminal minds and I have my craft <laughs> And my cookbooks. <laughs> so, and my Wanda's. So, I don't consider, ha I don't consider having this room to myself a little thing. I consider this a big thing because I have got crap walled. Look behind me. I don't have, I'm not, I don't have the money to make fancy shelves and we've not painted. This is still the, the uh, coating over the sheetrock. From 2009, we have never painted because we've never, we've never finished everything. So my house is unfinished. I don't live in a finished house. Um, you, you don't realize this, but I do not live in a finished house. My windows are not, they're trimmed, but they're not painted and finished out. Um, my curtains are not permanent 
pretty curtains. The doors are not, um, they're, tr they're trimmed, you know, but nothing is painted. There's no baseboards. You know, we do have carpet. I, I got the carpet. Um, so I made him put that down. I'm like, no, I'm not waiting on carpet or floor covering. Because I have lived in, Pi I told you before, I have lived in pioneer times. Pretty much uh, until, after we moved out of my trailer, which was just beautiful. To me, it was beautiful. It everything matched and was decorated and you know and then we bought this house from mama and there was a ton of water damage and see she didn't need this big old house to herself not that it's huge i'm just saying so we switched she took our trailer and we took her house and we bought it from her um but we had to do extensive renovations we fixed it enough to live in it because the floors were falling in um my ex-husband, he actually spoke to us back then. He came and was working, doing some the carpentry work, and he was out of the house, and he, he said he was scared being up under the bathroom where the toilet was. He said he was expecting it to fall in at any time. And I told my husband, I said, you listen to me. I said, if I'm sitting on that toilet and I fall in, I said, you just leave me there. Don't you call no fireman to come. Pull my big fat butt out of there. You just leave me down in the ground. <laughs> so anyway, we fixed enough. The whole back of the house was rotted. We fixed it enough to live in it. Well, for, oh my gosh, how many years? We didn't even have um, doors. We had like curtains and sheets strung. The... Um, a lot of the woodwork was bare. We didn't have sheetrock on some things. We we lived, you know, my kids have grown up in hard times as far as um, their living situation and just different things. And so have I. Well, then in 2009, 2008, maybe, I don't know, took us over a year. We just completely moved out, rented an apartment and gutted the whole house. I got pictures of it. I took pictures all along the way. I got a book. This house was gutted to the bare wall studs. He even took up the foundation piers in the middle. He had to replace the seal. You know, that's the part that goes up under the um, wall. He had to replace that on part of it. So he had to jack the house up. Well, he was not going to pay the the house jackers, whatever they're called, I know their name, that would have cost us a small fortune. So he rigged up a thing with wood boards and cement blocks and bottle jacks and jacked this house up to replace that wood seal up under there. So it was wall studs and dirt on the bottom. We lived in the apartment, then we moved out of the apartment and moved into a house and rented that. And then, I mean, the house was eating up all our money. And we're like, the, you know, what we call the big room, which is the built-in carport. It's finished to the point to where it's closed in, but it's not finished to where it would be a room to use quite yet. Um, because he had intentions, it was okay to live in when we moved here. We had our living room down there. And then when we started tearing stuff up, he started tearing that room up too. So he, mama had paneling up. He took the paneling down. He took the ceiling down because we were getting rid of the popcorn ceilings and, um, took the, um, everything, the, the, um, carpet and stuff up. And then when we got with this, we never finished that. So that room is not finished to this day. And that was in 2000. What I tell you, we finished up in here in 2009 to make it livable. Well, then we were living in the house and it was just, like I said, eating up the money. So we decided, and RJ had moved back home. He had lived in California and then he lived in Kentucky and then he moved back home. So he was back home with us. And so it was the four of us in that little less than 500 square foot room. Blankets and sheets on the floor for the floor covering. On the... um wall where it was just insulation between us and the you know vinyl side and the, the house is brick but then they vinyled in the the corner where the carport was i had um tablecloths and plastic sheeting up there to you know to try to keep the cold out well it was summer times it was was not trust me it was not cold we were 
suffocating in that room. We had fans going. He had the um, electric people leave us one builder's outlet, whatever you want to call it, to where we could run um, drop cords up through the where the carport and the house meet. There was, you know, you can get through there. You can't walk through there, but there's like an open space where you can run some cords through there. So whatever we run was on that. We had a, um, eventually a little like camping freezer, refrigerator from my brother. I didn't have a coffee pot. I drank instant coffee. Loved it. Listen, if I make a cup of instant coffee to this day, it will immediately take me back to that room with the four of us. But I'm going to tell you what, that was some of the happiest time, and I'm getting weepy about it. That was absolutely some of the happiest times of my life because you know why? Because the four of us were in that room and we were forced to be together as a family. There was no sitting in your room playing games or, you know, splitting up and watching TV. We were forced in there. And there was a, a show on at that time. Y'all remember Harper's Island? We loved that show. So whatever night it came on, I don't know, we were all four in that room huddled in front of that tv sitting in the floor we had um, mattresses on the floor so we had um, beds to lay on watching that show that was our thing i would sit there and they would be playing their um like video game thing their rock band video game thing and just listening to them play and having fun those those were absolutely some of the best times of my life. So when we got this room up here, the, the rest of the house, you know, the, everything put in, we still don't have doors. The doors, um, it was a while before we got doors up. We didn't have a toilet in yet. Um, we had to, you know, make other arrangements for that situation. And we did not have a kitchen. I didn't have a kitchen for ages. I washed dishes. We had, a, my brother gave us a, like a car cover and we had a back patio port that was concrete it's dug up now and we still haven't got it we put in some, tore out windows eventually a couple years ago back when i got the porch the same guy that helped pour the porch he um cut out the wall where the two doors y'all see my sliding glass window doors those used to be just two windows there so anyway we ain't finished that neither on the um outside as far as the um deck or nothing like that So, he, my brother gave me a um, car cover, like the metal poles and the canvas thing that covered our whole patio. And it's pretty big, too. I had picnic tables, like one of them glass kind of type picnic tables set up out there, and a hose pipe. And I had a um, electricity in here where I could, had him plug the stove in. I did not have a sink. I did not have running water in the house. No toilet, no nothing. But... I could go outside, get a pot full of water, come back in, boil it on the stove, take it out. I had dish pans. I had, I had it set up. I mean, I had it set up and go outside and heat up my water and wash my dishes and whatever I could cook on the stove, we could eat. And I did that for a good long while until he finally got the cabinets put in and the sink put in and I remember the day we got air conditioner or uh, electricity not air conditioner we had an air conditioner in the window at the time one of those just a big old window unit and that's what he cooled our whole house the whole house <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what we had lots of fans back in them days when they finally got that turned back on we were just like <sighs> so that's when everybody started moving back into their rooms we still for a long time before i had him put the carpet down um had blankets and sheets and things on the floor so we weren't walking on the the um you know the wood floor stuff and we got a shower first so we could shower because we were having to go to my best friend's house and shower and he, he was letting us he give me a key he let us come and go as we pleased and we did that for a long we're talking i'm talking months it was a very hard life. So I think I was saying how I got off on that subject was to me having this room, even though it's not a finished, beautiful, 
perfectly decorated room and it's not a perfectly beautiful decorated house it is um it's a big thing this room is not a little thing to me i'm just sitting around looking at all my stuff <laughs> my room is as busy as my brain is that ought, that ought to scare you right there as busy as this thing runs around that's how busy my room is so anyway let's just let me get that down so we can start on talking about my food how in the world anyway okay so thursday let's talk about thursday the calories that i know of were 1973 169 total carbs and 138 net carbs that's what i know of we'll get to that breakfast was my last bacon and egg hash brown lunch was half of a pizza bowl i split it with david Snacks, I had errands to run Thursday, so I was out, and after I ate half of that bowl, I guess I was just still really hungry. There was a couple of days I couldn't eat but half of it, and I guess that day I was still hungry, but I was out running errands for a good little bit, so I stopped at the QT because I had to use the facilities, I had to get gas, and if you've got a QT, you know that they've got one of those roller things, the foods that roll egg rolls and little corn dogs and hot dogs, you know, um, and like chicken taquitos and stuff like that so i got me two hot dogs and i threw the they got a little steamer drawer under it that keeps little plastic containers with a bun in it so you pull out your own little container put your hot dog in it and they got a little place where you can put toppings all i wanted was the weenies so i got two weenies and they were jumbo i didn't know i, I think they've changed since the last time i had a hot dog in there because it has been literally ages since i've eaten one of their hot dogs that and a bag of cashews so i ate that in the car running around doing my errands yes i was riding down the interstate eating my weenie <laughs> stop <laughs> for dinner we had pintos and fried taters and onions so there come in my carbs that that was my carbs but i had planned it and there that's another little thing I'm not going to give up my hobo dinner once or twice a month. I'm just not. I was raised like that, and you got to have some kind of um, creature comforts worked into your diet, into your food lifestyle. You've got to have some creature comforts, and that is one of mine. Now, this is where it got dicey. I only slept two hours, and that was from, like, was it 10 o'clock? Yeah, 10 p.m. to 12 a.m., and I could not go back to sleep. So I got up, come in here, we're on a craft, and it was, I wrote the time down so I'd remember. 2.30, I had more pintos and taters and greens. I didn't eat my greens at supper because I got too much vinegar on them, and it was choking me. I couldn't, I couldn't eat them. I was like, oh! <laughs> so I had some greens in. Well, that lasted me until about 4.30, and I had a little bag of pork rinds. I had bought me a little um, individual serving box, so I had a little bag of pork rinds. Well, that didn't do it. I was scrounging this house for something sweet. I had a sweet tooth. Oh, my gosh. I wanted a cookie. And see, I had Holly. She took them cookies to her room. I told you. And she, she did. She took them to her room. I said, you get them cookies out of here, either in the garbage or your room. So... She didn't want the lemon ones, so she got rid of them. I'm like, oh, I'll eat the lemon. <laughs> but she got rid of them, and she took the vanilla, the sandwich cookies, to her room. So there was no cookies. I had no cookies in the freezer. I had no, no, nothing sweet. And then it dawned on me. I had graham crackers left from Thanksgiving. I cannot remember what I made, but I just needed a little bit of graham crackers. That box of graham crackers has been in that drawer in there. I have this cabinet that is just a cabinet of drawers that is food storage since Thanksgiving. And they dawned on me. I'm going to tell you what. I didn't have any regular milk left, but I had almond milk because it was the day for groceries. I said, Thursday, mm -hmm. sat down with a cup of almond milk, got them graham crackers, eat the whole sleeve, emptied the box out. 
I did not even go read the box to try to figure out how many was in that sleeve. I did not count. I did not track. I did not measure. I did not wait. I just dipped and ate and dipped and ate and dipped and ate until every dead burn one of them was gone. So that was my Thursday night binge. So that's what I'm telling you. The calories I know of, I told you. I don't know those. That When I tell you I cannot be trusted with those things in my house, I tell you the truth. I cannot be trusted. I was trusted all the way from Thanksgiving, and then it hit. It hit. So, mm -mm, no more. Friday, I had 1,858 calories, 82 carbs, and 67 net carbs. So, that was a whole lot better. And that come from snack. Um, breakfast, I had, there was four pieces of the fully cooked bacon left, so I just ate all four of those and two eggs. And then lunch, th this is my big old lunch. I had three... <laughs> Two days in a row, I had three weenies. This was the Nathan's. I had bought a pack of Nathan's. Um, that's all my lip. Um, I was watching a Dollar Tree haul today, and they got a lip lip mask or something like that. But I got lip scrub over here in my drawer. I just don't use. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. I had some Nathan's weenies left, which my prep this week is hot dogs. Listen, that's my favorite food. If if you tell me I could never have a hot dog again, I'm done. I, I love hot dogs. <laughs> then a snack, I had a cucumber with about two tablespoons of ranch. I detest and I object to counting my salad dressing, but I did. Not sure how long that'll last. Then I have one um, um, Aldi Slim Jim and a Baby Bell Light. And that was, you know, later on. And for supper, I had my chili beans. I had a little bit of the um, yogurt on it, Greek yogurt, which was not um, fat-free. I, I tracked it. And I tracked a little bit of cheese to put on it. And then for snack last night, I had some popcorn. So that was yesterday. So that brings us to today. So I guess that's all. I'm, I'm not even looking up there at the time. I don't know how long we've been doing this, but maybe you got the ride your exercise bike. Susie, maybe you can walk on your treadmill. <laughs> so that is all. Get that back there. That's all I know for today. The next video will probably be meal prep, I guess. And somebody asked me um, on my video yesterday for my grocery haul meal plan. Sounded like I had a cold. No, my CPAP machine has quit humidifying. It's blowing air, but it's not humidifying. And it had my head messed up. I woke up, it felt like you were shooting fire down my nose. If you've got a CPAP, you know what it feels like when you run out of water and you wake up and you're burning like fire. So it had my nose completely messed up all day yesterday. So no, I, I do not have a cold. So thank you for asking. All right, well, that's it. I don't think I don't think I need to tell you anything else. Even if I thought of anything else, I did think of something else. You hold on, I'm gonna tell you this right quick. You know how people will speed past you on the road, thinking they're gonna get somewhere, and then you end up at the same stoplight. Okay, so that happened to me yesterday, but this was an extra extra good one. We had um, I was coming back from getting my Walmart groceries, and it's a, a four lane road. Um, no median, nothing like that. Just a, a small four lane road. Well, there was somebody turning in front of me, so God forbid I had to put my brakes on. Well, this car behind me didn't want to slow down. It was like a, a Jeep SUV or something. It was a woman when she went by, I seen her. She like zoomed around me and she gunned it and she flew up and she flew up on somebody. So she couldn't get past, right? So we're headed up. It's a very, very busy intersection. On It's a, it's a main intersection of roads here in town. And when we got up, the light was red. So she was about a nose ahead of me. That's all she gained when we got up there. She was about a nose ahead of me. Well, the light turns green. And you can turn left or you can turn right. And normally, this lane that I'm in to go straight or left goes slower than the right one because you can turn right on red. So that lane normally wheels down a little bit quicker while this one's waiting on the light to turn. Well... It didn't go anywhere. So apparently the person in front was going straight. When the light turned green, 
Guess whose lane went faster? She even, I don't know, maybe, she, I don't know what her problem was. She was like trying to go fast. Maybe her foot was asleep. She didn't know she was hitting the pedal at all. <laughs> I don't know. So she's trying to go, I guess, because, I don't know, maybe people, when they do that, they think, oh, I look like a doofus, didn't I? <laughs> when I got up to the green, I'm like, oh. Please stay, please stay, please stay. Because you know when you get so close to having been waiting in a big long line, you're like, oh, it's going to turn on me. I know it is. Well, it stayed green. And as I went under it, it turned. The car in front of her stopped. And she got behind that car and I got through. <laughs> so I just thought that was funny. She didn't get nowhere. She didn't get nowhere. Had she stayed behind me, she might have could have eked through that as it was changing. You see what I'm saying? But no, she was in a hurry. She got nowhere. I just thought that was funny, so I thought I'd share it with you. Well, that's all I know. I'll see you on the next video. <laughs>